Hello from the Museum of the Future. Very pleased to, to welcome Mr. Martin Wazowski, Chief Futurist uh, SAP Global. Thank you very much for inviting us. We would like to know basically the interconnection between sustainability, space, innovation, and the future. Yeah. It's a very complex formula that many don't understand. Please, would you explain more? Thank you. Uh, nice formula, by the way. I think it's um, nice to see the, the world as the resource we have, the resource we share, the only resource we know of so far. However, in space we have other resources, metals, minerals, uh, possibilities to experiment in ways we cannot do here. For example, 3D printing, chemistry and physics that we can do there. And that could be applied back on the planet. So already there we have a connection. But first, to see the globe as a resource in one perspective from space is fantastic. And we can measure the Earth in its doings. How, what is the data that the world produces? And how can that help a sustainable resource uh, for us humans to live on? How can we measure and manage and analyze that, wor that world data back to us on the planet? And there is a future outlook called the computational world or the calculatable world, if you want to know a little bit more about that, where the world could be a digital twin. Hmm. And we have digital twins of our processes, our factories today. How about, about the whole globe where we see the wind and the weather and the human motion and the business in a way we can look at? As, as someone said on the panel earlier, uh, we can only manage what we can measure. Measuring the Earth, Earth from space is better for sustainability and it's better for the innovation that we don't yet know what it would be, but we know it will help us to manage global processes. Mm. Also, it gives us a view that is very human. Mm. This is our planet. This is the Earth rise, as it was called in 69. The, 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 the fantastic phenomenon coming together in one perspective and one purpose. Yep. And I think that's the human and technology, the me and the we, coming together in one way. Yeah. Uh, my question, my second question, many in the Middle East are fearful. Mm -hmm. We hear a lot of uh, technology terms, very fresh, metaverse, uh, AI, blockchain, uh, every day a new term. And it crosses all the uh, basically tab uh, newspapers, all the headlines that no more human interaction, that uh, no more human jobs. It's, however, you did mention today that you, as a chief futurist of SAP, one, one of the world's top uh, tech companies, that it's not the case, that the human factor is here to stay. What can you say about that to the public in the MENA region? Yes, um, it's, it's a good question because it touches all our hearts. I think everybody feels what you just uh, explained and here as well. And I think first, humans have this emotional response directly already an asset that machines don't have. And how the human work will progress when you say people are afraid that technology will take their jobs. I don't believe that. There will be jobs that will disappear. However, new jobs will be created. That's one thing. And then there is a counter uh, argument that not, not net new jobs will reach the, the disappearance of the jobs. I say this. Machine learning is a fantastic, and AI and everything that comes out of that and new technologies, is a fantastic progress forward. Technology has always evolved humans from the wheel to the fire to AI. However, we need to start to teach machines the human speak. We learn how machines think, but we need to teach machines how humans have a purpose, curiosity, subjective exchange, what we think, what we imagine, and what we look forward to. Machines cannot imagine, not yet, and I don't see in foreseeable future that they will. So teaching machines human purpose, human survival, and human thriving is something that we call human and machine symbiosis. This is the decade where this will start. Thank you. Thank you.